Hello, I'm Ben Myers. Uh, this is an extract from my new novel called The Missing Kidney, which is uh, about the time when I woke up to find that I had a kidney removed. Uh, and then about a week later, I accidentally got addicted to morphine in hospital, I should add. Uh, it wasn't really by choice. So this is a little extract about morphine addiction. It's called The Complete Works of William Burroughs. I was poleaxed by some grade A pain-killing morphine, my eyeballs spinning at the same speed as the room but in the opposite direction. Total confusion reigned as my centre of balance scurried around my body like a trapped rat. Time, geography and sense of self all slipped away to re reveal a numb void of warm nothingness. In the void nothing mattered except maybe the continuation of my pre-teen high. Hospitals always have the best drugs. After the operation they pumped me so full of morphine I felt like the complete works of William Burroughs, sitting on a rickety shelf of a red dirt Tangiers hovel. Confused, adult, psyched and full of dark recesses illuminated by the warm wash of the, f the fuzziest of painkillers. I was all the cut up words of Burroughs held together by skin and wide eyes and everything made about as much sense as naked lunch the first time you read it. Clue, not much. Addiction being what it is, this chemical reliance only became known when the supply was cut short a few days into my post-op convalescence. Out of the blue, you might say. All I knew was a series of needles and tubes, some incoming, others outgoing. What they all did was anyone's guess, but I had faith in the good medics of the 20th century. But everyone is human and mistakes get made, including replacing the complete works of William Burroughs with a big fat cold turkey with a monkey on its back or some other metaphor for the botheration of addiction. I cannot overestimate the power of withdrawal from morphine after swimming in a nice regular pain slaying digitally administered supply for 10 days straight. It's a sickness amplified by the fear of the unknown, the fact that it comes with no forewarning, it just hits BAM and the room is the worst fairground ride you can imagine. This one goes up, down, side to side and around and around like a waltzer hand spun by a ragged gypsy lad. The room is a house of horrors you believe to be real and once you've been through morphine withdrawal you can't help but sympathise with every dope sick junkie who will cross your path for years to come. All the opiate cliches of lit literature and screen, they barely even come close to the physical and mental assault of a sudden withdrawal of a high-end supply. The chair you sit in pivots and tilts and spins and jolts and dunks you in a tank of your own feverish sweat and the confusion of it all makes you sick to your stomach. Just turning your head towards a vomit bowl intensifies the disorientation. You cannot speak, you dare not move and if the end isn't nigh you'd be glad to meet it head on soon enough just to stop the intensity of the dizzying alien experience. Small hands grip the wooden arms of the bedside chair that they prop you up in each morning and you hope for the best. This is addiction, being at the mercy of something you have to ingest to return to something approaching the balance of normality. You're a human spirit level and withdrawal has tipped the bubble way out of its steady equidistance and into the realms of the decidedly wonky. Again the angels save the day, whoops they say we misjudge your dosage, cut it down too, too soon. This time we'll wean you off, you'll see. They increase the dose back up again and sweet sweet relief washes over me as the morphine hits. I was so strung out that I barely noticed the kidney operation pain as the first fresh hit from the machine pumps a shot into my arm every eight hours. Compared to this traumatic morphine withdrawal or a nighttime case of trapped wind, the actual oper operation feels like a walk in the park. And later as an adult when people ask what it feels like to lose an organ you can say with some confidence well, it feels a lot like the complete works of William Burroughs.